Yo, what is up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Luminous Podcast. If you don't know me who I am, my name is Louis Quinn Angelo, and nice to meet every single one of you. Today, I've got a special guest for you guys who is inspiring and admirable, who is none other than the Dasso. Can you introduce a little bit about yourself, please? Uh, so nice to see you, everybody. And first of all, I would like to say thank you to each of everybody, everyone who is supporting to our podcast, uh, to our Lewis channel. So first of all, I'm currently living in Japan and studying a business major in Rizumitkan Asia Pacific University. Uh, so currently I'm in my first semester and today I would like to be here together with Lewis to talk about some of the education systems. Yeah, so today's topic will probably be a little bit new to some of those who lacks like self-education because self-education has not been advocated by like adults in our country in particular. So like in other words, people in our country, I mean Myanmar, lack self-education because they thought that, you know, education should be ended as soon as they finished high school or university. So they stopped learning or like stopped learning about life, learning about certain things which could probably benefit their life. So how do you understand self-education? Well, uh, to be honest, I think like the self-education, it um, it can be varied depending on what kind of background are you coming from, whether you live in the rural area or whether you live in the urban areas, your lifestyles, your family, that those kinds of things really matters when we talk about the self-education. For example, like as you have mentioned, some of the people stopped their education when they had already finished their high schools. So after beyond that, we have to our uh, we have to think about the reasons like do they quit the school because of their financial uh, issues or do they quit it because they don't want to study anymore so in our country uh, when we talk about self-education they have there can be a lot of factors affecting on it uh, maybe that person do not desire to study anymore or whether that person have to go to the workplace because of the other uh, financial issues of those kinds of things so not only in my country Myanmar uh, when we talk about some of the other Asian country like for example Bangladesh or maybe uh, another country also uh, depending on their financial and depending on their family depending on their lifestyles uh, those kind of things really affected on the self-education so I think that is very difficult to define uh, self-education just in one word because uh, from my perspective I think uh, it can be very depending on what kind of person are you mm. and what kind of background you come from mm. that's such a good point I would say okay so you know what, like a lot of people, um, especially teenagers and young adults like us in this like digital world, they presume that, you know, education is kind of like memorizing, studying lessons. So they think that education is equal to memorizing things and studying. So do you think that it is true? What do you think? Um, starting from my primary schools and um, grade nine, grade eight, my high schools, that is what I believed. Studying equal to memorizing each and everything in your textbook. Um, throughout my life, I have always been top one of the class. And wow. when somebody asks me, yeah, yeah, not blessing, but when somebody asks me why, I'm gonna say that because I can study everything in the textbook. Um. Uh, Mm, in my grade nine, at the eighth grade, uh, the question is not from the schools, right? The, like in our country, the eighth grade question is from the government, so that you have to study every single word in your textbook because nobody knows what will be the uh, questions of this year. So I study everything, like almost in details, like for example, uh, a long paragraph. I can say it without looking at the book. I study so wow, much. Impressive. 
um not impressive actually when i think about those kind of memories right now i do not remember what did i study at that time you know at those day um like three years or four years ago i studied so much until like 11 p.m 12 p.m i was studying the textbook but when somebody asks me why why did you study that much hard what did you learn right now i don't have answer because i forgot mm -hmm. everything so learning by heart it's more like just memorizing this for a short time so mm -hmm. i don't really think that that is a good uh a good things when we learn uh especially when you comes to universities to abroad the education system has changed completely um uh, there could be a textbook like in my current uh in my current semester uh the economic uh, the business textbook is digmatic but professor only teach like 10 or 11 slides uh, during his lectures so that he just talk about what is the concept of the chapter like maybe some topics are oh, in this chapter you're gonna learn about this topic this topic this topic in your real life you're gonna you're gonna have to solve those kind of business problems that is all he all he said in the classroom so what you have to do is like you have to read it back and another thing is like nobody cannot learn like no memorize all of this thick economic textbook so we have to read it and then we have to summarize it. We have to find out what is the main point. So when I do those kind of things, I remember it, the concept more than I used to be. So I think education is not about memorizing. It should be some things that you sort it out by yourself and that you find it out by yourself. What is the key theme of this topic? So I think that is the true education. And I'm really sad that I, I just noted um, when I get to university. So, you know, like, I really like the way you convey your answer, you know, the way you answer, because, yes, education does not necessarily equate to, like, memorizing things or, you know, studying by heart. But, you know, ironically, like, according to Oxford Dictionary, education is defined as the process of receiving or giving systematic instruction especially at a school or university. So it refers to the fact that education is widely misinterpreted by a lot of people, that education can only be assessed through attending schools or attending college and university. But um, what is interesting is that another definition of education is also stated, which is education refers to an enlightening experience so what mm. do you think so when i'm when you talk about that there is one thing that comes into my mind uh, i'm a fan of author called wang ding there is one thing he said in his podcast in his podcast and that is kind of funny but still now i truly i truly accept his point of view he said when you right on the best like um especially in my country especially in myanmar you have to write the best you have to be in on like in the best with a very crowded people so at the time you have to handle yourself not to fall down right like mm -hmm. holding the reins and yeah. swinging according mm -hmm. to the drive so he said when you are standing so strange at the time because of the force you can feel like you can get out of the bed so easily so that you, so that you have to make your body to be flexible when the mm -hmm. bus is turning right just wave your body to the right when you mm -hmm. when the bus is going left wave your body to the left so at the time just like are uh, in an easy way you can write the bus so he mm -hmm. said he asked to the audience what is it and then the audience answer oh it is how to write the best in Myanmar and he said no that is an education so mm -hmm. that is like that kind of things like we think studying business is the education but no you're going into a shop you're working as a shopkeeper you're learning how to operate maybe a very small shop in your country in your village that is also a kind of learning how to operate a business too so yeah i mean like of course like learning operationals 
are in the business and learning theoretical could be a little bit different because the person who learned theoretically understand the process more than the person who haven't. But however, we cannot say that um, just learning in the university is the education. So education can be um, like everywhere. Whatever mm -hmm. you are in your house, like you're learning how to cook from your mother, you're learning how to drive the car from your father, you're learning how to do financial accounting from your professor. Those sort of things are the same. Maybe they are important and their usage might be different, but still, mm -hmm. I feel that everything is education. So let's talk about Steady Diary right now. So okay. you have founded Steady Diary, which became one of the most popular nonprofit organizations in Myanmar. So congratulations, first and foremost. So Thank you. what is your main purpose of creating that organization in the first place as a teenager? Yeah, I was only 17 when I started that project, that organization. We did not even have any support at the times. Like even our logo is drawn by hand. Not like we are asking the logo maker. We are not hiring their business. Uh, we are not hiring or we are not like asking other people to draw logo. We don't really have financial support. We just draw it by hand. Um, so... The main purpose of Steady Diary, I usually mention that a lot. I used to mention it in the past too. And the main purpose is in my country, Myanmar, even when you want to practice your speaking, it is hard to gather a group of people who can speak English. So because in my country, like, there are only limited results at that time, especially in 2021, those, the kind of time, like everything is shut down. People are living in their own houses. We do not go to school. We do not go out. We do not hang out. Every other places are also closed, you know, like maybe in 2018, 2017, we can go to American Center and meet with the people, have, um, communications maybe you can hang out there and net uh find your network but during 2021 2020 covid 19 error and because of the political educations we could not do that so at mm -hmm. that time i really want to practice my english because i have been forgetting that you know i even forgot how to say how are you you know at that wow. time because yeah 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 I uh to be honest, I used to be fluent in English more than current, mm. more than this in the past. Like in my mm. 2017, 16, I was so fluent, but mm. because of the COVID, uh, I didn't have any practice, and then I forgot to say, "How are you?" Everything <laughs> so, stopped. Everything, and then I was so depressed, and I knew that okay, I need to practice it. I need to be back on the track again. So my purpose is that I want to create an environment where the youths can practice and improve their skills, like and also peer review thing, because peer to peer learning is more, way more better than learning from professors, you know, because mm -hmm. it is more flexible, mm -hmm, more mm -hmm. flexible, and they do not have to pay. So I want to create an environment, the education where people can access this for free. That was my first purpose. But after uh, one year. Uh, maybe like eight months or 10 months, I started to realize that uh, the education doesn't mean just learning a language, especially in my country, uh, the many, because of the same issues, students are losing their ways. So I would like to make sure that study diary can be a part of their educational process, uh, mm -hmm. uh, maybe a guide for them to help to go through their quality education. So mm -hmm. I would like to be some um, someone who can contribute to their educational process. Wow, wow. So technically speaking, you didn't expect this, like how successful the organization in the present right now, right? You didn't expect it to be like that uh, back in the day. I, I, mean. I think so. I think so. Actually, I didn't, didn't expect Steady Diary to be this much sustainable because mm -hmm. at the time my plan was just to create a short a very short term project 
but because of your helps, like because of the helps of the volunteers, mm-hmm. including you, uh, Stay January is very sustainable, like almost two years. So um, I wish this could stay more than two years too. I hope so. I hope so. Okay, so let's go back to the topic of self education. How can parents and educators support and encourage self directed learning in teenagers? Um. So, self directed education. Like I will. Before I answer your questions directly, there is something that I would like to mention. It's especially. Okay, let's divide this topic to two groups of peoples. A group of people who it's accessible for the education process after beyond their high school and a group of people who cannot go through beyond the high school. So the first one is to the people who could do it, like a, like maybe like family, like us, our parents who would like their children to continue their education until we become like PhD or something. <laughs> so, so, uh, so to some of the peoples, to some of the parents, uh, who have got high, um, inspiration and who mm-hmm. is giving very, very, who is very hopeful to their children, mm-hmm. um, those kind of parents, in my point of view, especially in Myanmar, they do not really understand and they do not really support self-directed education mm. so what they see in their eye is like you are attending the duration you are attending a school that is a correct way of education like mm. when somebody is mm. just opening the youtube watching the videos they're gonna think that that is a waste of time mm. and also <laughs> and also are in in university, like in my current university, we have got like students to students classrooms, so which means that the students who are outstanding in that subject teach to the students are uh, who do not really outstanding, who are not, you know, who a group of people who are not really outstanding in that subject. So mm-hmm. that is called peer to peer learning. But in my country, uh, during my high schools, people think that, especially parents think that peer to peer is not effective. They're gonna think that that is like a waste of time. Mm. Um, especially when a boy is so smart and that boy teach to the girl together if they are studying you mm. know what they are going to say so they thought so, that it is problematic right problematic teachers think that is problematic too. personally like you personally do you advocate mm-hmm. for self-education um that is hard to mention because um to be honest i i grew up with a systems mm-hmm. where i as i have mentioned like for 10 years 11 years already i have been studying everything in the textbook so self education and self study like education that you have to do by yourself it's not something that I used to be friendly or mm-hmm. some things that I used to be familiar. So I live in the stereotype where where I used to believe that studying is teacher is given to the students. Student is the one who is receiving. Teacher is the one who is giving. So nothing can give except the teachers. So mm-hmm. I live in the stereotype, to be honest. So um, it took me a few years to get out of that stereotype and to become adapted adapted to the tra- uh, changes in the education systems. Mm. So I have to make sure that I can be flexible uh, throughout the education system where we do not have to study it by heart or memorize it. So I think that that is such a good thing, but uh, it took a, a short amount of time, a period of time, mm-hmm. and also effort to be able to do self educate, like self education, or maybe uh, like self study as well. So I think myself, I'm still on the process of going today, so that I don't really have any ideas to talk about it yet. No, I no, haven't. That's completely fine. Okay, so finally, we, you know come to the last and final questions. So can you see the difference between the education system 
like constructive by authorities in our country, Myanmar and in Japan, like as far as you're concerned. What is the difference? Mm -hmm. So, uh, I would like to say two different stage of education. They are high schools and they are university. Mm -hmm. Because currently, I am meeting with the Japanese people at my university as friends, so that I know how Japanese people do, how Japanese people are making fruit in their university life, and also my part time job is uh. Talking and teaching to the high school junior high school students of Japan, so that I also know a little bit about the Japanese culture in their high school. So first of all, um, the main difference about the education systems between Japan and Myanmar in the our uh, middle like senior years and high school years, ah,、uh, it's in Japan they really promote the sports completely、mm -hmm. different, completely like. You might know that too. In our years,、um, we didn't even have a chance to go to the playground. Why? Because、mm -hmm. PE period is for maths, right? So <laughs> PE true, is for maths. True. true, very true. So that, but in here they have got different kind of ah、uh, club like soccer. So this this、mm -hmm. is Japanese accent is for soccer, and if you are a part of the soccer club, you have to be. In the real training for the soccer, like、wow. these, like the city has got、mm. a great playground field to、mm. practice. They have got instructors. If you are a person, a part of the basketball team, basketball club, you really have to practice basketball. So baseball、wow. as well. Like students studying from the、uh, elementary years, like five years or six years old, they are even studying.、Mm. To learn how to how to participate in the baseball game, so、mm -hmm. I think that is such a great thing. Students here, even my even where I'm living is a rural area of Japan. They have a very great asset for the sports. So, but mean, when does um schools、mm -hmm. provide students with like full service? Everything. Wow. Everything. Yeah. So it is like even like a mandatory. You have to、mm -hmm. be a part of that club. Wow. So that improves their teamwork, so and also、mm -hmm. the body too, because you know doing sports improve, um, the body structure. So in here, um,、mm -hmm. uh, when you go to the high school, like when you go to the soccer club, everyone is like almost in the same size, like the same height. I think that's such a great thing, not like in our country. Okay, so thanks for coming here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for inviting me. So that's all for today. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.